right. Next up, we have Maji Siminski giving a talk called Python, the Whisperer Guide. Are we? Maji, widely known as Orson, has been a passionate has been passionate about computing since childhood. During the day, he works as a C++ programmer at CERN, but his nights are spent harnessing electrons. Maji strongly supports both open source and open hardware initiatives, and the combination of the two made him join the Kai CAD or KeyCAD developers team in 2013. Since then, he has been regularly contributing to the project, perpetually striving to improve KeyCAD. Please welcome him to the stage. Greetings, fellow designers. In this, in this very last KeyCon talk, uh, I would like to tell you how to use Python with KeyCAD for fun and profit. Oh, sorry, sorry, C can you hear me now? All right, so it would be great if you already know, know Python, but if you don't, fear not. Python is a human-friendly scripting language with, uh, with a, a very gentle learning curve, so it's easy to make the first steps, though it takes time to master all of its secrets. And just for your information, I'm not a Python guru, and it's fine, because I want to prove that you don't have to be a Python expert to write uh, useful KiCad scripts. So I start uh, discussing potential applications for scripting. Then uh, I'll examine uh, the, the relation between Python and KiCad. After that comes the best part, the scripting interface and some demos. And I'll finish with uh, script examples. So you might be asking yourself, should I even bother how to learn scripting? And I think there are several good reasons to do so. The first one is uh, Python is so much more easier than C++. And you don't have to know much about KiCad internals to write KiCad scripts. So these two combined uh, makes Python scripting the easiest way to add new features in KiCad. Then the second reason, uh, it's simply impossible to cover all of your needs. And not only because they are often contradictory, it's just sometimes a matter of our uh, developer manpower. But there you go, you have a powerful mechanism when, where, that you can use for adapting KiCad for your own needs. And last but not least, I'm sure that you always have some tedious activities that you regularly run on your design. It might be panelizing, like I've seen in one of the previous talks, or perhaps archiving your project. It's a perfect application for scripting. So there are several places where you can use Python in KiCad, and I'll have a closer look at all of them. In eSchema, unfortunately, we don't have a scripting interface yet. It's planned for version six. So far, all you can do is to run the bill of materials generator. And all it can do is to run a Python script that will process an XML file generated by a schema and create your desired uh, bill of materials output. In PCB new, you have footprint wizards. And footprint wizards allow you to uh, write a Python script that describes uh, traits, uh, ge geometry traits of a particular footprint, uh, sorry, or for a family of footprints. And then by modifying certain parameters, you can create different variants of the same footprint. So for example, here, you have a QFP footprint. There's a list of parameters such as a uh, number of pads, uh, pads dimension and, and spacing. And just by modifying these parameters, you can get different variants. And then we come to PCB new scripting interface, which is really the best part that you can find in, in, in KiCad and is related to Python. The scripting interface in PCB new allows you to uh, access and modify all items in your layout. And you, you will see it's a very powerful mechanism. The, possi the possibilities are limitless. 
but just to give you some ideas or inspirations, you can use uh, the scripting interface for writing importers or exporters to foreign f f file formats. It will not work as usual, you know, m many file open and select a file. You'll have to run a script, but you can import or export all uh, geometry, board geometry to, to, to KiCad. Then you can also create your custom DRC rules. Like for example, uh, you could test if all silk, silk screen texts uh, have the same orientation or perhaps uh, check the track, track length matching to, to avoid skews. It can be used also for generating documentation. Only in PCB new, you, you, you have seen the previous uh, presentation about e schema hacks. But for PCB new, you can invoke the plotter and just generate whatever you need. And there is also a scripting console that you can use for either scripts development or just quick jobs, uh, quick, quick modifications of the layout. And from now on, I will focus on that particular part. And I need to be sincere with you. Not everything is perfect in the, in the scripting interface. I think Wayne has already mentioned that. The main problem is the Python bindings are directly mapped to C++ code. And as a consequence, uh, whenever we change the type name or function name or signature, it will affect the Python interface and as it, it, it may break your script. The good news is, is uh, we don't refactor the core code every month, so it's not like this interface is very, very unstable. You, have to, you don't have to be very uh, worried about that. The second better news is we plan to add an abstraction layer that will I isolate uh, C++ code from Python code, so you will not be affected by any changes on, on the C++ code. I hope I didn't discourage you too much from, from scripting. I don't see any people leaving. So let's talk about the scripting interface. Most of the scripts uh, start with getting a board object that, represe that represents the whole layout. And you can do that in several ways. You can either work with whatever you have in your editor by calling get board, or you can work with files if you have uh, if you want to write some standalone scripts, you have save board or load board, and you can do all the processing uh, without even running KiCad. Then when you have your board file, you need to find out how to access items on that board. And there are several, uh, several functions that you can use to access a particular uh, item type. So you have get tracks, modules, and so on or you can use some uh, more, let's say, uh, specific queries to filter uh, items by different criteria. Uh, there might be more functions like this. You need to check the API for more. I just want to give you some examples. Then when we, when you have uh, our board and items that we want to modify, uh, we need to know how to actually modify them, how to modify their properties. For board, you basically work with add and remove items. They are very self-explanatory. And for other item types, you have uh, several, uh, sev several functions uh, that are normally named set, get, or is, followed by the property name and this way you can affect this, you, you can change this particular property for, for an item. This, these three previous slides give you enough information to write your first quite basic scripts and already quite useful, but I think I should mention also action plugins. Action plugins give you a way to add menu entries for, for your scripts, so you can invoke them using the menu toolbar or, uh, sorry, they, they also give you another advantage. Uh, they automatically handle undo buffer entries and uh, handle visual updates. Uh, I will tell you more about it during the 
demo part. And action plugins are uh, installed or created by adding files in these directories. Well, now, now, now when I look at these paths, I think that's the part of the black magic with action plugins. Perhaps we should improve the, something, you know, handling action plugins in, in KiCad, because probably that's the secret knowledge that no, not so many people know. I, I, have, I have to think about it. So graphical user interface is possible, but, well, it's a vast topic. I, d I don't want to cover it now. You don't need it for, for your first scripts. But I want to point you in the right direction in case you are interested. Uh, because KiCad is written using WX widgets, it feels like a natural choice to go for WX Python, which is a, a library, uh, which are, uh, WX Python or its successor, Phoenix. And it's just the Python bindings for WX widgets library. It particularly makes sense if you want to share your scripts because you can be certain that other computers with KiCad installed, you have also these libraries. And if you find creating dialogues or user interfaces a daunting task, you can try out WX Form Builder, where it, it, it's a tool that you can use for uh, creating user interfaces in a graphical way. So you just drag and drop widgets, and then you can generate code uh, Python code that you can later reuse in your in your script. And yeah, actually, as I said, these three slides uh, describing the API are sufficient to start scripting. So why not? Let's start. All right. So this is blank blank PCB new window. We'll start with the scripting console. It can be invoked either using this toolbar button or here. And now we have a Python console. And you can, can you see it well? All right. So here we have a Python console that allows you to run Python code. So, and it, it just works. But to work with, PCB new, we need to import the PCB new, PCB new library. And you can do that in two ways. Either import PCB new, and then you need to uh, prepend all of your calls with PCB new dot. So for example, like this. Or the other way that I like more, because it's less typing afterward, it's from PCB new, import asterisk. And I will stick to that because yeah, I, I'm lazy, I don't like typing. So as I said previously, the first thing to do is to get your board object, but perhaps I should load something here to make, uh, to make the presentation interesting. So there we go. It's one of KiCad demos. And let's say that we would like to use Python to modify all of the VCC tracks and make them, I don't know, wider. So again, as I said, we, we start with getting the board object. And now for every track, look, look, at, this, look at the syntax. It's, it's, really, uh, it, it's, really it's really easy to understand. So for, for every track in the board, in the board, Tracks. Oh, by the way, you can see there's a uh, auto completion. It's very useful when you start scripting. For every track, if the track net name is VCC, uh, well, there, there's not. Oh, okay, is it better? All right. So, for for every track uh, belonging to VCC net we'll change its width to 10. And well, yeah, it's nothing has changed and it's expected, perhaps not for you, but for me, yes. So let's see what happens when I, uh, when I select these tracks. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, it's very thin. It's a bit strange. 
And as I keep selecting these tracks, they are becoming thin. It's very weird. So now we have two problems. The first one is our tracks, for some reason, are becoming very thin. And the second one, uh, they need to be selected to, to see the change. The second problem is easy to resolve, so we just call to refresh. Now all VCC tracks are very, very thin, right? <laughs> but uh, the problem is this call here, set with, uses the internal units of PCBNU, which are nanometers. So I have all VCC tracks 10 nanometer 10, 10 nanometer wide, and I don't think it's uh, it's anything. It, it's something that any board house can produce. So let's fix it. To to use some more reason, uh, more reasonable units, there is a call to from millimeter. Right, right. There you go. There is a call which will convert from millimeters to the internal units. And again, followed by refresh. Now we have thick tracks, right? <laughs> OK, so you see, this is like four lines of code to modify a particular set of tracks. You can easily imagine that you can, you can add some extra conditions here and make this modification more, more specific. Uh, now there is a third problem that we have to deal with. I did, I, I did some changes here, but I don't have undo or redo. And, well, we, we will deal with that later, with action plugins. Spoiler, sorry. So, uh, okay, so we made this very first script. It's nice. We, we s somehow understand how we can affect the, the objects on the, on the board. But I don't think anyone wants to type all this stuff all the time again and again and again. So the first thing you, ca you can do here to, to prevent such, such, uh, such situations, you can write your scripts in files and then run them in the, in the shell here. So let's do that. So, oh, I have the script ready, so maybe I will move it somewhere else. Basically, I will just type in the, the commands that I run in the, in the shell window. So start with from PCB, new, from PCB new import everything. And we get the board object. And for all for tracks in the board, We add the condition for the for the change. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, let's make it a different one so we can see the change. And followed by refresh. I hope there are no typos. And anyway, here, uh, well. There's a spell in Python that you can use for executing this file. I think it was easier with Python 2. With Python 3, the easiest way I know is to call exec, which will run the commands that you, that you give uh, as the parameter, as a string parameter to this, to this command. So here we need, we, we need to get the file contents. And for that, we can use open. We need to give the whole path. and follow that by, by the read call. And all right, it worked. Now our tracks are, again, uh, slightly, uh, now our tracks are one millimeter, one millimeter wide, and that's what we expected. But, you know, it still feels quite hackerish, right? We have to open this shell, we have to type some strange commands, and they are long. So there is a better solution to that, and these are the action plugins. So action plugins are Python scripts that you can invoke here. You just I don't have anything I don't have anything written here yet, 
but let's try it out. It's not so difficult as it, as it may look. For action plugins, uh, you have, uh, let's say, a skeleton that I, I'm not going to type for you because it's a bit more of code and probably I would make some mistakes. But here's the skeleton. You need to create a new class derived from action plugin class, and it has to contain two methods. The first one defaults contains some metadata, and the most important part is the name, because that's what, what you are going to see in the menu. So let's call it uh, thick v VCC tracks. The remaining ones we don't really care much about. And the most important part is the run method, because here you type the code that you want to run when you, when you execute your script from the fr fr from menu. So I hope you are still not bored with getting with making the VCC tracks wider, but yeah, he here it goes. <laughs> Maybe without any, any conditions, let's make everything wider. Uh, Eight millimeters, let's say. And yeah, it's, it's followed by one extra call to inform PCBNU about the existence of this plugin. So we have this plugin. Uh, we need to copy it to one of these directories that I, that I showed you on one of the previous slides. So for Linux, it's here and there. All right, so it's in this directory. It should show up when I click refresh plugins. And yeah, th there it is. Now we have a plugin that will make our tracks thicker. It's eight millimeters. And one extra thing, oh, so, sorry, I should have mentioned that. In our action plugins, in our action plugin, I didn't call it refresh, but somehow the action plugin did the visual update. So you don't have to care about refreshing the screen afterwards. And you also get an undo entry, so we can revert the changes. And it's really, really good if you want to write scripts and make them for human beings, not for hackers. And well, basically, that's it when it comes to writing scripts. Uh, you just need to explore the API and, uh, well, just use your Im Im imagination and fix your problems. And to give you some, ex uh, some inspiration, there are some more sophisticated scripts available, available on the internet. So for example, here you can see PCB draw. Someone has written a script to generate very nice board renderings that are perfect for uh, manuals. I think you can also use it for generating assembly documentation. You just uh, generate uh, renderings with some of the components populated so we can illustrate the component mounting order. Or that one I like very much, it's channel routing. So when you have two channels, for example, ADCs, that are basically the same circuits, and you just duplicate them several times on schematics, you can, you can route one of them, like you can see here. The other one is just, just, just here, it's n nothing done yet but you can duplicate the tracks and the component placement to the other channel. So it saves you a lot of time, especially when you have more than two channels. Uh, I'm sure that y you know how you could use it for your designs. I also know that there is someone working on teardrop script on the uh, kikad.info forum. So you should, you should look for some extra scripts there. I think there's a community bu building, there's a community uh, interested in Python scripts uh, rising from the forum. And uh, PCB new scripting is becoming more and more popular, so I think you will have no troubles finding uh, useful links on the topic. But if you had to recommend you one link, it would be, it would be Miles McCoo blog. This, this guy really knows a lot of, uh, uh, he really knows a lot about uh, PCB new scripting. He writes great uh, great scripts, and more importantly, he explains them. So if you want to know more, if you want to write more advanced scripts, that's a good place to go. And the remaining two links are just, uh, 
well, th these are just the documentation links that you will need to, you, you'll have to use when you write your own scripts. That's probably the documentation you will have to refer to most often. And that's all I wanted to tell you about Python scripting. Now, my friends, go write Python scripts and share them with the community. So uh, actually, I, I have one question for you. Has anyone found the unicorn, uh, sorry, the bad unicorn? No? All right, that's it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So you mentioned that you want us to write scripts and share them with the community. Uh, have you, like, have you or the developers, or anyone thought of like a place where we can actually like, like a package management or something where we can like post these plugins to a central location so other people can find them? Because right now I have to go and look on the forums and I'm constantly learning about new ones, but there's no place like where I can go and say what plugins are available. Yeah, that, that's right. There is no single central point where you can share your scripts. And that's an idea that has already popped out during KeyCon, and I think it's a great one. So probably it should be added to the to-do list, but f for now I don't have any, any good proposal for you. Yeah. Is there any way to parameterize action scripts? Uh, what, what kind of actions? Uh, is that what they're called? Action. 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 Action plugins. Uh, to to pass parameters into them th through KiCad, parameterize them in any way. Yeah. Well, you you could use the user interface. You could create a dialog so you could type in some parameters and then use them in your script. Sort of along the same lines, is there any way to have it be interactive with the KiCad or the PCB new interface? Like to be able to have, you know, say a new UI that you've created for the script pop up, but then be able to select something in PCB new and the script knows what you're selecting? I think there's a method called is selected. So you could iterate over all items, let's say over all tracks. And I have used uh, get net name to find out what is the get uh, what is the net name, but instead you could call is selected, and then you will get the tracks that are well selected. <laughs> cool. Do you know if there are plans to, for example, allow us to use Python to add context menu items or things like that? So to be able to say, when you click on something, the context menu will now add a, add a new plugin to deal with that specific thing, to be able to run them from somewhere other than the action menu. Uh, for now, I, didn't, I don't think there are such plans, but well, it can be discussed. We, we, we still don't have very, very well specified uh, the Python. We, we haven't specified the Python interface, the abstraction layer yet. So that's something we have to think about. There is just a pre preliminary document for that. So perhaps you can think about it. Do you know of a way to call like menu items or press buttons using the API, um, specifically looking around like DRC and um, ERC type checks that KiCad might do already and making them happen? So, so, sorry, is it about uh, clicking buttons using the uh, Python API? Did I get it right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think there are there are methods to do that. Perhaps you could invoke the RCI. I just don't don't remember if it's available in the API right now. Perhaps in the future it should be there. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.